Paul is now in prison. It seems like his ministerial success, his missionary journeys, his uh, traveling all over the ancient Near East, meeting new people, sharing the gospel, uh, seeing the gospel take root, it seems like all of that had been cut short. He's in prison in Rome, and if this kind of situation happened today, you can imagine kind of the media frenzy around that first uh, few months of his imprisonment, but eventually, yeah, the story would die out, people would move on and think, well, his time is done. But how does Paul respond to his imprisonment? Is he discouraged? Does he think, well, my life is now wasted, empty, can't do much here? Does he feel useless? No. In fact, if you read this letter, you begin to see that for him really to live is Christ. And what he means by living isn't just successful living, doing the great things that he wants to do. He recognized that whatever situation he finds himself in, it is an opportunity to glorify Christ. Why? Because his life belongs to Christ and he wants Christ to be manifested to the world through his life. And so as he's writing this letter, he recognizes even an imprisonment for him to live as Christ. Before our reading in Philippians 1 verse 12, uh, he tells there to the Philippian church, I want you to know what has happened to me has really served to advance the gospel. This is not a disappointment or discouragement. It has advanced the gospel. Why? Because throughout the whole imperial guard and all the rest, my imprisonment is for Christ. I'm here for a reason. I'm here because I live for Christ. Does your circumstance embarrass you? Paul writes, it's my eager expectation and my hope that I will not be at all ashamed but that with full courage, now, in this moment, as always, Christ will be honored in my body, whether by life or by death. May not be what I have thought for myself, may not be what I had planned for myself, might not be the success that I had envisioned for myself, it might be something that I would have wanted to avoid uh, as much as I could, but here is my prayer. That in this moment, this trial, this suffering, this persecution, this challenge, Christ will be glorified in my body. For me to live is Christ frees you from embarrassment about your situation, but gives you meaningful purpose. That in this moment, it is not about holding on to my pride and my plans and my success and my vision for the future, but in this moment, recognizing that Jesus Christ is sovereign over all, I will live for Christ. Because for me to live is Christ. I'm not my own. I belong to Him. And I long that He may be glorified in my body. Beloved, whatever situation you find yourself in, Glorify Christ. Let Him be exalted in your response. What do you live for? May we all be able to say together, for me to live is Christ. For us to live is Christ. And to die is gain. Death for me is not scary. Death for me is not confusing. Death for me isn't gross. Death is departure. It's a departure to be with Christ. By faith in Jesus Christ, I have clear purpose and meaning for life and have a joy even as I face death. Amen.